Hey guys, um, pardon me if I sound a little rough, I'm not uh, feeling very good, but anyway, there's been a lot of confusion lately about um, these solenoids and how to adjust them, so I'm going to try and clear that up uh, again. Now when I say call it or collar, you can see it right here, and it's split on the top all the way down. And this screw pinches that collar, and it's also threaded, and the solenoid just screws into it. So once you get your gun down to this uh, point of disassembly, the first thing you want to do is loosen this screw. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now it's loose, and a lot of times that collar in there especially if you're like in a uh, humid environment it's made out of um, carbon steel so it will actually seize up on you but it's supposed to uh, slide forward I don't know if this one's stuck or not let's see by pushing on the back of the solenoid nope it's moving freely and that's what we want went ahead and took the collar all the way out so you guys could get a better look at it and note that flat spot on the bottom that's for it to sit in there with that flat spot going towards the bottom of the frame like so it corresponds in there with a flat spot on the bottom and that gives you the right alignment for that screw to pinch on your collar and pinch the threads so you don't have any movement like so or like this if that collar is loose and a lot of times from the factory they won't tighten them up as much as I do and if this gun gets dropped that will happen and then you're um, you'll be all out of um, adjustment for your solenoid because it's going to be bottoming out now this is the part that confuses people the most so I'm going to really try to explain it well your whole assembly meaning your collar your plunger this little thing that goes da, 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 and your solenoid can move forward freely now your plunger can move independently and to fully adjust for maximum power you want that plunger there it is on the valve you want to push it in and then see how far the whole assembly goes forward when you press on the entire assembly basically like the uh, back of the okay so here I know we've got a long way that we can go as far as screwing the plunger or the solenoid in and if you hold the solenoid this is extremely hard to do with one hand if you hold the solenoid hit the valve and then you press well we're not even depressing the valve so we're gonna screw it in a little bit more Pull everything back. We're hitting the valve. Now we're going to push the whole assembly forward. And that collar is going to move from the back of the frame. And it's going to move forward. See that? That's how much further I can screw in my solenoid before it bottoms out. I'm going to back off of this to show you a little bit better. Try to get it to come out more. And then that distance right there. That distance right there. Is how much further we can move. We can screw in the solenoid before it bottoms out. So... We just tighten up our solenoid a little bit.
bring everything back. Okay, you see it move forward just a little bit there. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say that's that's there. So now what we want to do, we want to pull everything back. Yeah, make sure it doesn't wobble around a little, um, too much, and then flip it over. We're gonna tighten that screw, and we'll be done. Now, after you do this, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. You need to have your solenoid aligned vertically and horizontally when you do this with these um, uh, Blackbird magazines. If you don't know, this part will actually move around uh, to some extent. And especially if you're running the um, new seals like I've got in here. This one isn't pushed out all the way. I've just kind of got it in here for demonstration purposes. But what that'll do is when you lock this down, it will press on it because you've only got that one claw that holds holds it right here. There's nothing on the other side, so it'll want to it'll want to torque it like this way. So that puts this kind of you know cockeyed this way out of alignment and what that often does is it'll make your solenoid strike on the side of the um, valve seat because as you get your plunger further in there if you see how it's designed it's got that fatter piece on it so um it wants to torque it and strike on your valve seat uh, so you get your vertical alignment from adjusting your latch plate until you're dead center uh, striking the valve and after you get that you're up and down right you want to get your horizontal and I showed you in another video but what I did was I just, with the barrel completely out, the barrel breech out, I put a couple of pieces of tape in here until I had it to the right thickness where it actually pushed the valve body in the correct alignment um, horizontally. So this is my Bumblebee magazine, and I've got this one dead center. I've been shooting it, and it hasn't hit off center once and I put a couple thousand rounds through it about the only other thing to be aware of is that this is probably not going to damage your um, valve seat if you're just running co2 and stock voltage <coughs> so it's much more all this is much more important when you start running say five um, s packs you know 18 and a half volts or 24 volts because that solenoid is just rocking so much harder and I've noticed that if I get my solenoid adjustment too close what will happen is when I'm really running it hard this plunger will actually stretch out a little bit and start hitting on the valve seat so you after you do any um, solenoid adjustment shoot it a few times and just make sure that there's no shiny spots on your valve seat. Make sure everything's striking properly. And that's about all there is to that. Um, if you guys have any more questions, you know, feel free to email me or hit me up in the comments. Later.